So I recently got myself a Nokia Lumia 930 running Windows Phone 8.1. I originally got it for the sole purpose of exploring the Windows Phone hacking community, but apparently the Windows Phone hacking community is completely dead. Yeah, oops. Alright, so the hacking community is dead. I thought, why not use this phone as my main device for one week? That one week apparently turned into 8 months. So today I'm going to be talking about how I used Windows Phone 8.1 for 8 months and my experiences using this device. Now before I show my experiences with this phone, I really wanted to emphasize the point that I'm not going to be trashing on the platform. It was innovative in many ways and I actually really liked this phone. I bought it at a time when I was adopting to a lot of Microsoft services like the, my Windows 7 PC, my Surface Pro 3 running Windows 8.1, I had basically the whole office suite, I was using OneDrive, I was using Bing, wait and like a bunch of other Microsoft products. So I thought, okay, well maybe this won't be as bad as I thought it would be. And it turns out it wasn't that bad. Now let's talk about the first few months. And honestly, these were one of the best few months I've ever had with a mobile platform. iOS was starting to get still with it using the same formula over and over again with a bunch of icons on a screen without taking any advantage of the hardware whatsoever. One of the most unique things about Windows Phone are the live tiles. Now live tiles are just big app icons that show information about a particular app on your home screen. Like look at this, I'm looking at weather information on my home screen without actually launching the app. And this applies for pretty much every single app that supports this feature, which is a lot of apps. I can look at my subscriptions, my mail, my messages. It's so convenient to have this all on my home screen rather than looking at the information and the app itself. Next, let's talk about dark mode. Now, I know iOS got dark mode this year on Android a couple of years ago, but in my opinion, Windows Phone utilizes dark mode the best just because it's native to the operating system. It's been a thing since Windows Phone 7. And as a result, pretty much every single app has dark mode built into it. And this is great considering that other platforms have consistency issues with dark mode sometimes. And besides, when I got this phone, there wasn't a dark mode for iOS, and I couldn't imagine one coming until iOS 13. So it was really nice to have this in my hand. Now this is actually the first time I've transitioned to a display that's larger than 4 inches and I thought I was going to lose one-handed functionality altogether. However, the transition was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Windows Phone 8.1 makes sure that a bunch of app elements are at the bottom of the screen where I can actually reach, not at the top of the display where I can't reach anything. I'm looking at you, iOS. In addition to that, there's also the sliding UI that Windows Phone 8.1 provides. Going from menu to menu is so easy because I can just slide from one menu to another. One-handed usage is so easy on Windows Phone 8.1, even on a big display. And going back to iOS, I've never seen the reason for everything to be at the top of the display. Now, I like my consistency, and Windows Phone 8.1 hits it out of the park. When you switch from app to app, you'll notice that each app has a similar user interface with its similar animations and same kind of user interface where you slide between each menu. This is really cool and it makes each app feel consistent with one another and it makes each app actually feel native to the operating system. And the built-in sounds in Windows Phone 8.1, I don't know about you, but Windows Phone 8.1 sounds are definitely the most satisfying sounds I've listened to. It's definitely really hard for me to explain audio, so I'm just going to let you take a listen. I don't know, they're just so satisfying to listen to for some reason. So that's a brief overview of the UI Windows Phone 8.1. Definitely one of the most unique and interesting user interfaces I've seen in a very long time. But now let's move on to some other Windows Phone 8.1 features that I've really liked over the past few months. Let's first talk about the lock screen. At first it might seem like any ordinary lock screen that shows your time, your date, and your notifications at the bottom, but do not be fooled, there's actually a lot more customization behind this lock screen. One of the cool things is that you can set an app as your wallpaper, and that's pretty cool because app developers can actually take advantage of this. For example, I chose Bing as my app wallpaper, and this allows Bing wallpapers to change every single day on my lock screen. And again, there's a lot more apps you can choose as your wallpaper. You can choose weather to show weather information on your lock screen. That's actually really useful. Now let's jump down to this section, the notifications. You can choose one app to show detailed status of notifications and then five other apps to show quick status that just shows the number of notifications you have for that particular app. At first this might seem limiting, but this does prevent the issue of notification clutter everywhere on your lock screen, which I think we know other platforms have issues with that. 
Next, let's talk about Action Center. I find this as a cool combination of Notification Center and Control Panel on iOS. On the top, you'll see four toggles that you can customize to your liking that change phone settings. Although this might seem limiting, again, it keeps it simplified and also you can change this to your liking, so I don't find this as a big deal. And also the Notification Center, which is, I mean, it's a Notification Center, there's not really much going on. Uh, but there's a cool Clear All command, which is pretty useful. And at this point, when I saw all the customization features that Windows Phone provided, I've realized how much more customization it has over iOS. Like, iOS has virtually no customization, and Android does have a lot more customization than Windows Phone, but Windows Phone just has the perfect balance of customization that and I've never thought about the need of wanting more customization over my phone. Like, this is absolutely perfect for what I need it for. And the keyboard, man. I don't know about you, but the keyboard in Windows Phone is such a charm to use. I think it just has to do with its reliability, with every key knowing exactly where and when you're gonna type. You might look at this keyboard at first and be like, why are the keys so big? But don't be fooled, these are actually really good placements for the keyboard. It makes it really easy to type. And there's also the small stuff like the swipe feature that I've actually used a lot. The satisfying keyboard sounds. And one of my favorite parts, the copies, paste, and selection tools. I can't tell you how many times on iOS I've tried to select some text and it ended up selecting something else. And trying to make a copy and paste is a nightmare. Windows Phone manages to make this process really easy. I just, I just double tap some text and there you go, it starts selecting. There's a copy button that appears automatically and a paste button that's always on the keyboard. And I find this really useful. This is also the first time I've transitioned to an OLED display from an LCD and I gotta tell you, the transition is remarkable. The blacks actually look black, not just a milky grey color. The live tiles actually look like they're floating on the display, which is really cool. In addition to the colors just popping a lot more. Sure, this is a hardware thing, but Windows Phone takes advantage of the OLED display in such a way that it makes Windows Phone look so much more characteristic. If you look at iOS, aside from the dark mode, it doesn't look like it takes advantage of the OLED display at all. Quick, give me one place in iOS where it actually takes advantage of the OLED display. Yeah. I guess I could mention how this phone has a Snapdragon 800 clocked at 2.2 GHz and 4 cores and 2 GB of RAM, but even with these specs, the phone still runs buttery smooth. Even though animations in Windows Phone 8.1 have always been a bit long, the animations themselves are still really fluid. There were like no stutters or freezes while I was using this phone for the past 8 months, and I understand there were loading times when you're launching an app, but this is still way better than freezes and crashes on a phone that's been getting updates for like 5 years. And this is the good thing about releasing continuous updates for major releases of an OS. It's like you're not bogging down the phone with too many features to the point where it gets slow, but you still have an up-to-date operating system, which is nice, even if support for this operating system is pretty much dead. And here's another one of my favorites with Windows Phone 8.1, the seamless integration with your Microsoft account. Now, for reference, I'm going to be using a Surface Pro 3 running Windows 8.1. So this is basically Windows 8.1 to Windows Phone 8.1. I don't know about Windows 10. I'm pretty sure there's some small differences, but regardless, let's talk about it. First up is the Microsoft and Microsoft Office app synchronization between both devices. This can include Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, OneNote, and OneDrive. And even though you can do the same thing on Android and iOS, the UI actually looks identical on both devices, so it's really nice knowing that when I go from one device to another, it has the same exact user experience. But then again, you can do the same thing on Android and iOS, so let's move on. Third-party apps from the Windows Store. Whatever I do on a third-party app on one device manages to sync exactly the same way on the other device and vice versa. This is really nice considering that I use these apps sometimes and I always switch from device to device. So again, that's really nice. But here's the craziest thing. I managed to switch to Internet Explorer as my main web browser. Yeah. This is because whatever tabs I have open on one device manages to keep open on the other device and it also syncs my favorites and my bookmarks and all that stuff. So yeah, I managed to use Internet Explorer as my main web browser. I don't anymore, but 8 months man, 8 months. There's also the other things like the calendar, reminders, my contacts, but my favorite part is how when you put both devices side to side, they look exactly the same. I mean, just look at this. It's live tile switching on both devices. I don't know, something about this makes me really happy. I think it's the fact that Windows Phone 8.1 feels like a Windows 8.1 computer in a miniature size. It's just really nice to see both of these devices right next to each other, knowing that the live tiles flip the same way, and they're both syncing to each other all the time. And here's a fun feature, Cortana. 
Now, I actually got this phone when some of Cortana's functionality was discontinued, and looking back at it, I really wished I used some of her other features, but I think some of her important functionalities are still present in this phone. And I consider Cortana more as a quick action menu rather than a voice assistant. You know those times when you have to take out your phone and you have to do something quick, such as setting a reminder, doing a quick search online? That's what I consider Cortana. With Cortana, you can set reminders, you can do a quick search, look for places in your buy, and all that stuff. And it's really nice to have all of this in one menu, considering that it makes doing things much quicker and it causes less redundancy. And another small but cool feature, a lot of Windows phones actually shipped with a dedicated button to the camera app. So this makes it really easy to just take out your phone, take a picture, and move on with your life. But the story doesn't end there because the camera app is like customization heaven for people. You can adjust the white balance, the ISO, the shutter speed, the focus, and brightness, and so on. Like, I have never seen so much customization over a camera app in such a long time. So seeing this for the first time kind of blew me away. And I actually used it a lot throughout these 8 months, so that was pretty nice. And here's a little bonus. We all know that Google didn't contribute much to the Windows Phone platform, so it was pretty much on the user to find a good YouTube alternative. And here's one I really wanted to talk about. MyTube. Now, it's 99 cents, but the trial has very little limitations, and honestly, the 99 cents is pretty much worth it. I prefer this app to the stock YouTube app. It's ad-free, it has a really good user interface that works really well with Windows Phone and my Surface Pro 3. You can download videos, which I've never seen before. There's no trash YouTube recommended, which I found as a really big problem going back to the stock YouTube app. You can pin subscriptions and other videos to your start screen, which I found extremely useful and it's simple to use. This is all I need from a YouTube app, and I found this as the best alternative to YouTube I have ever seen before. But putting all these great and amazing features to the side, I felt like I stood out from the crowd a lot more with Windows Phone. Windows Phone just had a lot more personality than their counter platforms, and I feel like this is something that Apple and Google just doesn't understand. Like, they gotta add some really good and creative features to their phone soon, because if they just keep adding emojis to the iPhone, we're gonna reach a barrier and it's not gonna be good for the company. But why I left Windows Phone 8.1 after 8 months is what we'll be talking about next. I feel like I got my Windows Phone 8.1 device at the worst time possible. I got it in July of 2019 and I used it for 3 months without any issues until I reached October 2019 when the Windows Store finally shut down. Now here's the problem with this. If I uninstalled an app, I can't re-download the app anymore. Now I know the majority of the apps in the Windows Store weren't that good, but knowing that you can't reinstall the apps again just created a lot of tension. Luckily enough, I downloaded as much important apps as I could to the device before the shutdown, but even then there was some tension in my mind because if my device ran into an issue and I needed to restore it, I can't just start re-downloading the apps. So yeah, this just created a lot of tension. But simultaneously, the Microsoft account servers also shut down. What this basically means is that if you sign out of your Microsoft account on your Windows Phone, you can't log back in. This virtually eliminates all benefits of Windows Phone for me, and this just created more and more tension for me. Luckily, I kept using it because I still had my apps and I was still logged into my Microsoft account even after the servers shut down, so I kept using it. And then at some point, my tube stopped working for some reason. There was no more video playback. Now I kept using the phone, but it got kind of annoying when I had to start using the web version of YouTube. I mean it worked, but it was a little bit less convenient for me. But then I finally reached my last straw when the MSN apps finally shut down in February of 2020. These were vital apps, I need my MSN news app to check the news and I need the MSN weather app to look at the weather. And losing these apps, these, this is basic phone functionality that I'm losing. And as sad as it was, it was time for me to finally find a newer iPhone. Now, couldn't I have just upgraded my Lumia 930 to Windows 10 Mobile? Sure, I could have gone MSN app support and I could have gone my Windows Store back. But at this point, third-party app developers, even MyTube, have stopped releasing updates for Windows 10 Mobile. And there was really no point to stick to the platform anymore. So as sad as it was, it was time to get a new phone and I needed to move on. 
So, it's June of 2020, and I finally left my Lumia 930 for an iPhone 11 Pro. However, putting things into perspective, it's definitely an end of an era for Windows Phone 8.1. I've noticed when I was using my Lumia 930, I was a lot more productive than I ever was on iOS. And this is mostly because of the lack of junk food entertainment slash social media on Windows Phone. I was so much more conformed to getting things I needed to get done on my Windows Phone, rather than getting distracted with a YouTube video or a Reddit post. If you want to know about more of what I'm trying to say, please watch this Why We Needed Windows Phone A Faceless Speculation video by John J3000. He does an excellent job explaining this concept of distractionless phone usage with Windows Phone. But in summary, I was just a lot less distracted with Windows Phone, and there was a lot less flashy entertainment with it. I've always been a light phone user. Sure, I've been comparing phones, I've been jailbreaking, but that's not really part of productiveness, and besides, that's a hobby of mine. In terms of being productive, the most I've ever needed from my phone is texting, calling, checking my email, and at most just watching a YouTube video. I've never needed it for any more than that. In terms of productiveness, I've always done all my work on a computer. And honestly, the transition to the iPhone 11 Pro was pretty underwhelming. The only big feature that got me excited was the bigger screen and a small form factor. There wasn't really any other notable change that got me excited as an ordinary phone user. Both the Lumia 930 and the iPhone 11 Pro had OLED displays, they're both pretty fast and they both have half decent cameras. Sure, the iPhone 11 Pro does that better in some regard, but the difference isn't big enough to justify the fact that the iPhone 11 Pro is miles better than the Lumia 930. If anything, the transition to iOS was effectively worse. I've lost all the perks of MyTube, and now I have to adapt to this garbage YouTube recommended section. There's still a lifeless UI with a bunch of icons on a screen, and this is the same exact layout we've had for more than a decade, like I can't believe they haven't changed this yet. There's all this extra iMessage stuff like, come on, this isn't supposed to help me text better, this is supposed to distract me more. And the sheer abundance of things that are at the top of the screen that makes it harder for me to do one-handed usage. Like, one-handed usage is virtually gone for me. The notification center is still messy. And the control center is at the top right of the display, like, what kind of design choice was that? And within the stock mail app, there were delayed mail notifications and I couldn't fix it, and it got to the point where I had to switch to the Outlook app that Microsoft provided in the App Store. And it all comes down to the lack of control you have over iOS unless you jailbreak. Luckily enough for me, I've managed to jailbreak my phone and I'm having no issues. However, this isn't the same for other iPhone users. Now reflecting on everything I've just said, I can tell why people in the Windows Phone Reddit are having a hard time transitioning to iOS and Android. Like, when you're in their shoes, you can definitely see why it's difficult to transition. Now, are the issues really that bad? Not really. I guess I just wanted to make the point that Windows Phone was a good platform for the right user. I guess here's a good summary of what I'm trying to talk about. iOS has great app support and it's very stable. However, the user has poor control over the operating system. Android, on the other hand, also has great app support, but the user has full control of the operating system. But it can sometimes be unstable, but like this could be phone dependent. Windows Phone on the other hand has a lack of app support, but it has a good balanced control over the operating system, and it's extremely stable. And that's exactly why I liked Windows Phone the most. The lack of app support didn't affect me as much as it did for others. It definitely overtakes iOS 6 as my favorite mobile operating system of all time. The whole video might sound biased, and honestly it is, but ultimately, this is how I truly feel. Of course, I still have a driving passion for iOS, but Windows Phone will always have a special place within me. Without sounding too sensational, it's with a heavy heart that I leave Windows Phone. It had a perfect balance of everything I needed from a mobile device, from features, to lack of distractions, to productivity. It's all there, for one tenth of the price of the iPhone 11 Pro. The platform had so much more personality which I have never seen before on another platform. I'm sad to see this phone hadn't grown to a larger audience. It had great potential, and I hope to see others take inspiration from Windows Phone to make something better. Windows Phone was the perfect platform for me. It was the perfect phone for me.